assalamu alaikum uh, dear students today we are going to start uh, geotechnical engineering 1 uh, the course code is ce209 uh, it's uh, level 4 course uh, of the second year uh, the semester is one semester duration and the grad hours are three for the theory and one for the lab uh, the course instructor, uh, I'm Dr. Kaiser Iqbal. Uh, you can check my email, uh, which is available right here. You can get back to me on email if you have any queries or on our WhatsApp group as well. Uh, you can access the lecture details at portal.su.edu.pk as the detail is given in the following. Mm. Okay, so first of all course objectives uh, this course is basically related to uh, to study the properties of soils and rocks uh, and then applying the uh, principles of mechanics to soils and rocks and determine the properties classify the soil into various groups uh, for use of various uh, geotechnical structures which you will learn in geotechnical engineering 2 or uh, geotechnical design which is uh, then uh, uh, the next course in the sixth semester so there are basically three courses uh, in your curriculum regarding geotechnical engineering first is geotechnical engineering 1 then geotechnical engineering 2 and then geotechnical design so in geotechnical engineering we will basically uh, learn about the soil properties and classify them in various groups also we will study the seepage and permeability uh, topics in this course as well so the first objective is to enable the students uh, to learn soil properties and their classification in various groups so they will learn some basic properties of the soils and then you should basically be able to classify them uh, according to the various classification systems like USCS like British standards and like astrocyl classification you can basically on the base of them classify them into various groups uh, once we have done that uh, the another objective uh, is to apply the lines of mechanics to the soils uh, so that engineers can design and construct safe structures on or uh, using the soil so that are basically these are the two main objectives or the goals which we have for this course and then the CLOs course learning outcomes uh, <clears throat> during this course we will study various topics and once we have studied those topics and you have basically successfully uh, achieved uh, the sufficient grades uh, in these in this course at the end of the, that you should be able to define uh, the types of soil and classify them into various uh, groups or types uh, you should be able to explain the relationship between the various soil properties we will discuss some various soil properties like there are different types of unit weights there are various volume conditions in which the soil exists various saturation conditions in which the soil exists so we will try to develop the relationship between them so if you know uh, one property or couple of properties you can basically determine the other properties of the soil from them so we'll discuss those correlations and then you should be able to draw the flow nets from uh, for the seepage uh, through a particular structure uh, we will also discuss that how the water basically flows towards or under any structure uh, how much amount of flow occurs in a particular amount of time how much amount of water you should be accumulating on other side etc and then you will be able to basically compare the flow through various types of soil uh, and design conditions so basically over here you can see uh, the c2 uh, represents uh, that it's a, a cognitive domain uh, with the level 2 uh, and then the plos plo1 and plo2 plo3 and plo4 are basically being focused in this case uh, so you will be basically learning about those uh, outcomes once you have achieved these outcomes you should be able to basically achieve those program learning outcomes as well at the same time um, <clears throat> so the various teaching and learning activities which we will be performing during this course you will be provided with the quizzes you will be uh, provided with the take home test which you will solve at home and then submit them uh, probably hopefully through our online system 
I will basically update you uh, with the passage of time regarding the submission procedures. So uh, hopefully you will be able to follow them. Uh, and once we are in the class, we will also have some in-class activities as well. Uh, I will also provide you with the visit video presentations like the one I'm presenting right now, but there will be some additional videos as well. Uh, you'll be provided with the reading assignments uh, from the uh, internet and from the resources which are provided to you. Uh, once we are back in the classroom, we'll have some classroom discussions on various topics. Uh, also uh, on the portal, there is a discussion uh, in the forums as well. So you can open some discussions uh, if you do not understand some topic very well or you want to discuss some points. Then you can see in the class activities on the top, you've got uh, forum discussions. So over there you can start discussion and I and other fellows, uh, they can basically, or other course instructors which are involved in this, in this course, they can basically reply to those discussion topics. Uh, you'll be using internet and email a lot, especially when we are learning online uh, in the beginning. So you will basically be using them. Uh, homework assignments will be provided. And then we will have major uh, midterm examination. I will also provide you with some instructor lead presentations like the one which I am uh, providing uh, as a part of this uh, introductory topic. Uh, you can download this from the website, from the portal. Uh, then we will have final comprehensive examination. We will also have some solved examples in the classrooms. You will conduct tutorials in the classroom and interview and viva voce examination will be also part of the this course and majority of it will happen in the lab section of this course. So assessment tasks and activities uh, as I discussed earlier uh, over here you can see the distribution of various assessment uh, activities and their marks. The major midterm examination uh, will be carrying 25% weightage, final comprehensive examination will be 50% weightage. Uh, and your quiz assignment, uh, take home assignment, viva voce, etc. It will have up to 25% weightage. Uh, the CLO distribution of the courses you can see over here. Uh, the CLO 1 and 2 will be covered in the midterm, while all the CLOs will be covered in the final term and your uh, sessional uh, assessment. So, <coughs> the CLO distribution. Uh, now, coming to the keyword syllabus. Uh, there are uh, four chapters uh, which we will be covering in this uh, particular uh, course. First is related to origin of soil and effect of grain size. Uh, so origin all of the soils they are basically uh, weathering from the rock from their parent rock through various weathering procedures like wind action, water action, geological activities etc. So we will discuss about that origin, then we will uh, discuss the soil particle sizes, the various geological origins, various types of soils have got various particle sizes. Then we will discuss some detail about the clay minerals which are usually the smallest type of the particles sizes. Uh, we will discuss the specific gravity of the various types of soil. Uh, we will uh, do mechanical analysis of the soil as well which is usually referred to as sieve analysis. Uh, in which we pass the soil through various sieves and we determine their particle size and from that we will basically uh, draw the particle size distribution curve uh, which is usually called S curve yeah, or sieve analysis curve and then we will also discuss the particle shape, form, sphericity and effects on the soil properties. Uh, then we will move on to the weight volume relationships. Um, the weight of the soils, uh, they are related to related to the volume uh, of the soil as well. Soil is basically usually referred to as a three-phase medium comprised of solids, water and air. Uh, so you can see over here on the left the weights they can be easily related to the volumes. So for that we will be basically uh, determining various uh, relationships. So if you have one property you can basically calculate the other property from that as well. Like for example if you have weight of water you can basically determine volume of water from that as well. Uh, <coughs> because volume uh, in the soil is not directly measured. So you will require these relationships. Uh, then we will also discuss about porosity and moisture content of a soil, uh, relative density, <coughs> consistency of soil. Uh, we will also discuss about Etterberg limits, 
liquid limit, plastic limit, shrinkage limit of the soil, uh, liquidity and consistency indices, uh, plasticity chart, etc. So all these properties they will be required to classify the soil. So for engineers it is very very important to basically divide the soil in various groups so then we can use them for a particular purpose or we can put them in a particular group so we will know the properties of that group so it will be easy for us to decide to build a particular structure on that soil or if to use that soil for a particular construction or not so before that you will basically need a proper classification you need to know the the indus properties of the soils so these properties will be very very important in the coming lectures and we will also discuss some soil structure as well we show you some scanning electron microscope images as well uh, from which you can basically see that uh, what is the basically the difference between a structure of a clay soil or sandy soil etc then once we have those properties we can basically look at the various uh, classification systems for the soil uh, the most important are provided in the following like astro soil classification system which stands for american association of state highway and transport officials then we have unified soil classification system or commonly referred to uscs soil classification system and we have got british soil standards as well and then we've got some other standards like U.S. Department of Agriculture or USDA uh, soil classification systems, which is basically used basically for agriculture purposes, but we will discuss that in some detail as well because uh, uh, that might be relevant to you in some cases. So we will discuss the classification, how we can basically divide the soils in various groups if we know the properties which we discussed on the previous slides. Then some of the further discussion will take place on permeability which is the ability of any particular soil to allow the water to pass through it. So we will discuss some theorems in this regard like Bernoulli equation, Darcy law. Uh, then we will discuss the hydraulic conductivity, uh, Lipartite determination of that hydraulic conductivity which is the ability of the soil to allow the water to pass through its pores. Uh, Usually the soils are divided in two groups that is granular soils and cohesive soils. Uh, granular are more pervious, uh, more permeable while uh, uh, cohesive soils are less pervious or less permeable they allow less water to pass through it. So both have different types of testing procedures as well falling head and constant head test procedures which we will discuss inshallah you will determine them in lab as well. And then we will also discuss directional variable variability or in isotropy of permeability so in different soils the permeability is different in different directions like in vertical or lateral directions so we will also discuss that as well and we will also discuss some permeability tests and how they are conducted in the field uh, then in chapter number five uh, we will basically discuss the seepage flow uh, through any structure, underneath any structure, towards any structure. So commonly, usually the seepage is important in case of dams. So if you have water stored on one side, the water will seep underneath the dam and you will be able to uh, collect some water downstream as well. So we want to basically usually minimize that. So we will discuss various uh, equations and theorems like Laplace equation in this case. Uh, we will discuss some simple uh, flow problems and mathematical solutions for them uh, by drawing the flow net. We will also determine the uplift under any hydraulic structures or any structure. There is an uplift seepage force uh, presents an upward force on a structure. Usually that uh, reduces the bearing capacity uh, of the soil. So we will discuss that as well. Uh, we will also discuss seepage through our dam uh, with an impervious uh, base which you can see over here and we will also discuss Cassegrande solution for seepage through earthen dams. Uh, you will require some books to be followed over here. Uh, your main textbooks is uh, Principles of Geotechnical Engineering. You can have 6, 7 or 8th edition. I have provided you with the 7th edition. Uh, which you can uh, download from the resources. It's, it is by uh, Professor Brajam Das. Uh, you can also follow uh, uh, Soil Mechanics by R.F. Craig as well. I have also provided you with these books. 
but besides that you can have John Atkinson's uh, introduction to mechanics of soils and foundation also there's another book soil mechanics concepts and applications by professor William Powery so you can also follow that uh, for this particular course so that is it for uh, the introduction and the list of the topics which we will be following during this course the next presentation will be introduction to the subject uh, why we study geotechnical engineering from where this basically arrived uh, what are the various uh, major areas of geotechnical engineering what are the major uses of geotechnical engineering and civil engineering so we will be discussing that inshallah hopefully in our next presentation so keep in touch and thank you very much for listening